This is a grass frog. The grass frog is in the phylum Chordata and the class Amphibia, which makes it an amphibian. Um, amphibians are usually fairly easily recognized by their skin. Um, they tend to be uh, very smooth skinned and the skin has a slippery or slimy or, or wet feeling. And that's because amphibians are able to use their skin as a gas exchange surface. So most of them spend either uh, most of their time living in the water or a portion of their lives in the water and they're able to absorb oxygen from the water directly through the surface of the skin. So um, in terms of the external anatomy of this animal, um, it, you can see the head area here, okay, and then this is the trunk down here. Okay, so the head obviously has some sensory organs, of course. Um, there are a large pair of eyes up near the front of the face. Um, the nostrils are visible uh, here and here. Okay, and there's this tympanic membrane as well on the side. That's this round structure. Uh, the tympanic membrane is used to receive um, sound. So frogs and toads, uh, similar animals, they communicate uh, using sound. So they need, uh, as we saw in the grasshopper, uh, a, an ear or an eardrum or a surface to receive those um, sound vibrations. Um, the limbs of the animal are clearly modified to perform different functions. The forelimbs and the hind limbs look quite different. Uh, the forelimbs are very uh, very short and stout, um, still very muscular. Um, you can see how broad they are, but they're not particularly long. Um, they're used um, when the animal is sitting, walking. They're also used in handling food, so the animal, uh, the frog, can use it to push food into its mouth. Um, and then the front legs, or sorry, the hind legs, are clearly much, much longer. Um, you can see uh, the size of the muscles. They're extremely muscular legs. Um, and these are obviously modified um, as being jumping legs. So jumping is a, is a main method of locomotion for these animals. Also, um, being uh, aquatic or semi-aquatic, you can see that the feet are modified um, to have webbed toes. So you can see the toes with this membranous webbing in between. So those act like flippers, which are used to propel the animal in water. So these are also swimming legs as well as jumping legs. I just wanted to point out a couple of interesting features of the, um, the mouth. Um, frogs are carnivorous animals, so they are adapted to um, capture and consume other organisms. They can eat everything from insects to other vertebrates, including small mammals, um, reptiles, other amphibians, other frogs. Um, one interesting adaptation, we all know that frogs use their tongue and with a with sort of a sticky secretion to catch, um, catch their prey in many cases, but what we're often not aware of is how that works. So. Um, you and I have the point of attachment of our tongue sort of at the back of our throat and we can thrust our tongue forward like this. Frogs, it works a little bit differently. The point of attachment is actually at the front of the lower mandible, right about here. So in feeding, the tongue is actually flipped, I'll show you here, out of the body like so. And it's extended. This is a very muscular organ which can be extended um, quite far. So once the, um, the food is stuck on the tip of the tongue, uh, the frog can then flip it back into its mouth like so. So it's kind of an interesting feature there. Um, another thing that we may, don't often think about is the fact that um, frogs do have teeth. Um, they're very small, but if you were to run your finger sort of along the inside edge of this upper mandible here, you would be able to feel the, um, the maxillary teeth. Okay, so these are the, the maxillary teeth up here. And again, once you have food in your mouth, um, although these aren't used for chewing, um, they are used to keep the, the prey in place or to hold it in its mouth before it's um, swallowed and consumed. I have uh, begun the dissection on this frog, and you can see that I've removed the skin uh, just from the ventral surface here. So I just wanted to point a few things out at this stage. Um, you can see here all of this uh, beigeous tissue is in fact muscle tissue. So I just wanted to show you the extent of the tissue along this abdominal wall. The other thing that I wanted you to notice was on the skin itself, on the flap that I'm holding here, you can see all those um, squiggly little lines 
lines of different colors. This animal has been um, injected with colored latex so we could see different structures. All of those lines are uh, little veins and, capil and capillaries uh, lining the underside of the skin. So again, um, just going back to that idea that amphibians are able to breathe underwater through the surface of their skin, you can see how highly vascularized the skin is um, in order to facilitate that oxygen exchange.